the 2022 NBA draft went absolutely perfect. And what you guys are getting for today's video is my first time actually sitting down and processing the results. For a lot of you guys that don't know, I do have a second channel called Extra Crispy. It's a reaction channel for the NBA. Um, it's got over 150,000 subscribers, and I was committed to doing a blind draft reaction, which I did right before this video, posted it, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, like once Jade and Ivy went to the Detroit Pistons. Fifth pick in the 2022 NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons select Jade. Jade! My mind went completely blank. I am so hyped right now, but I'm trying to keep calm, composed, and for this video, what we are going to be doing is going through every single team and every single draft pick for the first round. I'm not going to do the second round, not going to lie, man. I just, it would be like a two hour video if I did that. Uh, but before we get going on this, you know, first I got to say, man, thank you guys so much for your support on this channel as of late. I've gotten like 150,000 views, like in the past, like two days. That's usually like a monthly total for me, so thank you so much for that. Um, also, if I can please ask, you know, I've been working really hard on these videos, and when it comes down to it, I can't grow the channel without you, bro. So if you are new to this channel, man, please hit that subscribe button. Um, it really does mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for that. And let's get going on it, man. Let's get going on this, because I have some thoughts. Like, I know how, like, the top five picks went, and after that, I kind of went blank. But even the top five picks, a lot of surprises there. So let's start with the first pick of the magic taken Paolo Bancaro. So it was reported yesterday by Woj himself, man. Woj let me down <laughs> that uh, Jabari was gonna go number one and Paolo ended up going number one. I think it was the right choice for the magic. I think he fits in at that power forward position very nicely. I love Wendell Carter at the center spot. So that works out great. You got Jalen Suggs, you got Cole Anthony. Franz Wagner was a top rookie last year. Like you have a very nice young core with that team. Um, obviously when it comes down to it, they're going to have to look to trade some of their pieces of the way. I don't really see Jonathan Isaac fitting on that team now. He's been away for two years anyway with torn ACLs. But uh, you guys got a new dude up in there in Paolo Bancaro. Number one pick. Like be excited about that. That's so great. And uh, yeah, I'm happy for the Magic and their future. And then we got Chet to the OKC Thunder. Not too much to say about this. This was definitely the right pick for them. They needed a, you know, seven-foot unicorn type of center for that team. So yeah, um, it's going to be great watching him with Giddy and Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Uh, I guess, you know, if people thought Jabari should have went number one, I guess maybe they could have got him at number two right here. But I still think Chet was the right choice. I think that's the guy that the OKC Thunder really, really wanted. And then now we got Jabari Smith. Have I been saying Parker? I don't know, man. <laughs> Jabari Smith to the Houston Rockets at three. So if I'm being honest, between Paolo and Jabari, you know, I assumed that Jabari was going to go number one. I kind of thought that Paolo was the better of the two. Now, I could be wrong about that. This could be a bad take in a few years. You guys will probably screenshot it and show it to me in a few years, man. That's completely fine. But um, I think when it comes down to it, like, like, like this actually works pretty nicely for the Houston Rockets. I think that Jabari's fit on the Houston Rockets, it's much better than what Paolo's would have been. I think Jabari is a better three-point shooter. He's a better, you know, just like he's got like that two-way game to him that I think is going to be inserted into that power forward spot and work out perfectly next to guys like Sangoon, who is going to be a great center, you know, a great big guy himself on that Houston Rockets team. You got Jalen Green, Kevin Porter, like this team is going to be running the basketball, man. Like, you know, y'all got the seven-second offense, about to be the two-second offense. Um, going to be a great player for the Houston Rockets. I think the top three, it did not really go as I thought it would. Um, but I still think there was not really like, a, there wasn't like any like lose-lose situations in that case. And then at number four, we got the Sacramento Kings just making my day, taking Keegan Murray. I have nothing against Keegan Murray. I think he's going to be a fantastic basketball player, three-way scorer in the NBA. Uh, my issue is that, you know, like he is like 21, 22 years of age already. And I don't know. I just didn't really want him in Detroit, but him on the Sacramento Kings, not going to lie, like defensively, it makes me a little nervous for, uh, with him next to Sabonis. But I think from an offensive standpoint, you know, he's going to give a lot for De'Aaron Fox to work with. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to see what he can do for that team, man. And then number five, we got Jaden Ivey to the Detroit Pistons. I could not be happier. I could not be happier, man. I was so sure we were going to get Shaden Sharp or Benedict Matherin, which I would have been happy with. But the fact that that's what my mindset was on, and we ended up getting the best guard, at least on paper, in this draft, after last year drafting the best guard on paper in the draft, 
we go from Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, to Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, to now Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey. I had no idea it was going to go this way. I am <laughs> so happy, man. I'm so happy. I... I might be going to the home opener. I'm not going to lie, man. I might be going to the Pistons home opener. i talk to my girlfriend about it. Uh, see if she wants to tag along with me and stuff. Because, I don't know, man. It should be more fun that way. But, yeah. Whew! So excited. Number six, we got Benedict Matherin to the Indiana Pacers. Uh, elite offensive player, man. Like I think he was a really high-volume three-point shooter in college, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong about that. Um, I think he's going to be a great backcourt mate for Tyrese Halliburton. Um, I hope that the... Pacers don't get rid of Miles Turner. I still think he should stay on that team and everything like that. I think there's some, you know, areas on the roster to fill out now via free agency. And even having guys on the team, like, you know, like TJ Warnbeck or somebody like that. Like, this Pacers team, they could be pretty solid next season. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So, yeah, Matherin to the Pacers. Number seven, we got Shaden Sharp to the Portland Trailblazers. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this because, you know, you look at the team right now. Obviously, they just got Jeremy Grant. Um, there's reports they were going to trade the pick for OG. I think Shaden Sharp is definitely a project, and I don't know if the Trailblazers have the patience right now to wait on a guy like that, right? Because obviously they got Damian Lillard, they want to win now and everything um, by some of the moves they have made. So I guess if anything, you know, he's not going to start next season. I just think he's too young for that to win experience. But uh, even if they take like a season to kind of work him into the NBA game, you know, he didn't really play at all in college. Um, I still think in the future, he could be a really nice player next to guys like Nazir Little and Anfernee Simon. So yeah, great player um, at number seven to get. Number eight, we got Dyson Daniels to the Pelicans. I absolutely love this pick, man, because he fits in right with that tall ball stuff that they're doing up in there. And uh, he's somebody that I think can obviously handle the rock, but also he has enough of that glue guy you know, effort, man, Marcus Smartness in him, man. He's going to make those extra plays up in there. So either he, if he has the ball or not, he is going to make a difference. And you got to love dudes like that, man. Um, I don't know if he's going to start next season because obviously they got like Zion on the team, but they were kind of running a backcourt of CJ and Brandon Ingram. And that was also to incorporate, obviously, you know, you want, in, you want, you need all uh, Brandon Ingram starting. They got Herbert Jones up in there and everything. And, you know, whoever they do, whatever they do at center. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of incorporate all these pieces into that Pelicans lineup. Number eight, we got Jeremy Sohan. Um, I'm not going to lie, I don't know too much about him. Uh, I just, I think right here, maybe, you might say a little bit of a reach, but also, I'm not going to doubt the San Antonio Spurs, because historically, they're always a franchise that just drafts really nicely man i'm still waiting for josh primo to break out as a superstar in the nba so yeah well i think it's a reach i'm not doubting this antonio spurs uh they'll be completely fine and really look at the roster and mainly what they needed here i think was a center but um you know they got yaka Pertle. he's not like an old player or nothing like that like i think what yaka Pertle brings to the spurs right now you know that's what like jalen jordan would have brought or mark williams they would have drafted somebody like that so sohan more of an interesting pick. I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. Uh, number 10, we got Johnny Davis to the Washington Wizards. So it's a pretty fun pick right here. Gives him a little insurance policy if Bradley Beal does end up, you know, going to a different team. And if not, then you got a guy that you know, probably comes off the bench at first, but works his way into the starting line maybe at some point in the season or next season. So yeah, Johnny Davis to the Washington Wizards. Uh, we got Zhang, uh, Osman Zhang. Uh, drafted by the Knicks, but traded to the OKC Thunder, man. So, yeah, with the OKC Thunder getting a player like this, um, I think he's like 6'8", 6'9", so I don't know if he's more of a small forward, power forward. I think it's a big-time W, though, because obviously they got Chet for that center spot. Uh, I do like their three kind of guard trio. They're running with Shea, Giddy, and also Dort. So I don't know if Dieng or Zhang, however you say his name, goes to the power forward spot. Maybe he's off the bench for this season. I don't really know, man. But uh, yeah, OKC Thunder. Um, and then right after that, they had another pick in which they drafted Jalen Williams. Yeah, Jalen Williams. Uh, that's definitely a player that I heard was moving up a lot of players' draft boards. I don't really know a lot about the kid, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, the OKC Thunder obviously like him a lot. So back-to-back -back picks there for the OKC Thunder. And the number 13, man, traded to Detroit, man. I am so hyped. We got Jalen Duran. So I'm going to call it like it is. If we would have drafted Jalen Duran with our number five pick, I would have been pissed off. But the fact that we got a guy that a lot of teams were heavy on, like I've seen him in mock drafts going to teams like the Spurs. And we got him at 13. 
for that Milwaukee Bucks protected pick of 2025, we essentially traded Jeremy Grant for Jalen Duran. And this is very similar to when Troy Weaver traded Luke Kennard for the pick that landed us Sadiq Bey. I am never, ever questioning this man ever again, man. Like, uh, I will admit, big time L by Crispy Flakes. I will hold that L, man, in my heart forever. That video is always going to be on the internet. But uh, I don't know. I think a lot of it is just I'm so used to the Pistons, you know, screwing up with old management that I got to start trusting Weaver. And I do, man. Ooh, I'm loving this team. I'm loving this team. Jalen Durant, he's got like a 7'6 wingspan. Um, I think he's really young, so I do think it's going to take a few seasons for him to work on things like, you know, not getting in foul trouble and, you know, just all that stuff that comes with being a young NBA center. I still think the Pistons very much go for Aiton, and, uh, you know, we got Beef Stew. Maybe there's a sign trade with Beef Stew and Killian Hayes. You know, the Suns are going to be looking for a point guard eventually. I know they probably don't want Killian Hayes, man, but I still believe in them. So, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm excited. Uh, number 14, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers going with Ochai Obaji. And I do know a lot of Cleveland fans were all about him watching him on the team. I think instantly he can be inserted into that starting small forward role. I think Laurie Markkinen probably gets traded. Um, I guess in theory you could use Laurie Markkinen as the power forward off the bench with uh, Kevin Love as the center. That would work out completely fine. But uh, just not a small forward, man. I don't want to see more Laurie Markkinen as small forward. I really don't. And then the Charlotte Hornets also had the 15th pick. And they went with Mark Williams. So basically with this, you know, trade they made, uh, they were saying, okay, there's two really good centers here. They're pretty similar, you know, with what they bring to a basketball team in Duran and Mark Williams. So they traded Duran, obviously, to the Knicks, which went to the Pistons. And then we got Mark Williams over on the Hornets. And uh, yeah, he's going to block some shots and be a good inside DeAndre Jordan type player for LaMelo Ball. That's great, man. Uh, number 16, we got a really good pick here, man. Absolute steal here by the Hawks. Getting A.J. Griffin player comparison being uh, Jalen Brown. Um, yeah, I mean, you put him at that small forward spot. The, 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 the thing is, though, with him is that, you know, he does play the same position as DeAndre Hunter. So, I don't know. Maybe A.J. can play some shooting guard. Maybe that will be an option they go with. Um, I mean, obviously, Jalen Brown plays shooting guard for the... Boston Celtics, so if their games are that similar, it could definitely work out nicely. Maybe having a taller backcourt mate in the backcourt with Trey Young would be a big time W there. But so I got guys like John Collins, so they're looking to shop. I don't know if I want DeAndre Hunter at the power forward spot. So we'll kind of see how that all kind of works out as the offseason plays out. Um, we got Tari Eason, probably said his name wrong, to the Houston Rockets. I think he's a really good, like, switchable defensive type of player. So, W for them. We're going to start kind of speeding up a little bit here, man, because we're getting to, like, the end of the first round. So, uh, we have the Chicago Bulls going with Dalen Terry, um, another player that I have read about a little bit. And I think he's kind of more of a, you know, just he, he's going to do a little bit everything for a basketball team, which is good for the Bulls. I mean, they got their stars on that team already. We need uh, rookies that go on the team and just, you know, like, find their – Roll in the offense or defensive scheme and make the most out of it. Uh, we got Jake LaRavia to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do not know much about him, not going to lie. Uh, we got Malachi Branham to the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, I think he's a 6'5 guard out of the Ohio State University. So, a lot of guards on that Spurs team. I guess they're going to see, you know, who's the best ones and go from there. Um, cause they still got Primo on the team, man. You know, they got Lonnie Walker and the Jante and you know, all those dudes. So also what's his name? Uh, uh, Deve uh, Devin Vassell. So they got a lot of, um, guard play kind of wing players too on that team. Uh, we got the Denver Nuggets going with Christian Braun. Do not know much about him, but, uh, player on the Denver Nuggets. Now we got the Memphis Grizzlies going with Walker Kessler, which I actually really, really love this pick for them, man. Just because I believe he did lead, uh, the college players in blocked shots. I think he's somebody that is going to be nicely mentored by Steven Adams at that center position. And, you know, I think Steven Adams has one more year left on his deal. So after that, I think, you know, Kessler instantly goes into that starting center spot, you know, good in the pick and roll on defense and everything, blocking shots, doing things along those lines. I uh, play next to Jaron Jackson is going to be elite interior defense. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. So that was a great pick by them. I really do like that pick a lot. Uh, we got David Rohde, drafted by the 76ers, traded to Memphis. I believe I read this morning that he was traded alongside DeAnthony Melton, which uh, DeAnthony Melton is basically Matisse Thibault with offense. He's a really good defensive player, man. So, um, yeah, the 76ers are getting him probably as their Matisse replacement. And you always look at one over, man. Okay, that's all looking good. Okay, um... 
Yeah, great. And then David Roby, don't know much about him. Uh, we got Marion Bochamp, too, with the Milwaukee Bucks here, man. Absolute seal. That team needed some more kind of wing players on that on their squad. And uh, Bochamp is going to be balling out, man. We got Blake Wesley to the Spurs. Do not know much about him. Yeah, at this point, I don't know much about anybody. Uh, Wendell Moore to the Dallas Mavericks. Nikola Jovic. Not Jokic, Jovic, man. To the Miami Heat. And uh, I do know a little bit about him. I think he's kind of more like a stretch big, like 6'10 power forward. So, yeah, that actually seems like a piece that the Heat kind of lacked at that four spot. Right, man? Um, so, that's going to be great. And here we have, oh, we actually got like two, at least two steals in a row, in my opinion. Uh, Patrick Baldwin to the Golden State Warriors. This dude was supposed to be a lottery pick, man. And he just sucked last year in college. So, him going to the Warriors to add on to their core of James Wiseman jonathan kaminga and moses moody um like you got baldwin as that small forward spot this warriors team is insane they're literally rebuilding while winning championships it's crazy it's crazy man and yo, yo, bill russell with the block damn bro damn man and last two picks another huge steal here for the memphis grizzlies ty ty washington Tyus Jones, I think, is probably going to be looking for a starting point guard opportunity. Hot take, I think he ends up on the Washington Wizards. And uh, Ty Ty Washington, I think, instantly can come on that team and be the new backup point guard. Maybe a year or two down the road, I guess. Maybe they go on draft more of a veteran because you don't want to risk a rookie as your backup point guard for a team that's looking to contend. But steal for them right there, man. Um, I had him going like number 10 to the Washington Wizards at some point. And uh, we got Peyton Watson traded to Denver. Do not know much about him, man. But yes, that is the 2022 NBA draft. That's all we got for this video, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and peace out, my friends.